Are you looking for a new way to highlight people or products within your video? I might have just what you're looking for. So let's head on over to Canva and let me show you what I figured out. Come on y'all. So the first thing you're gonna need is a photo. So I'm gonna go in here because I've already used some photos. So what I'm gonna do is pull up a photo that I used. As you see, here's all the puppies that I used earlier. Let's see, where is that cosmetic one that I used? I used too many photos. All right, so I'm gonna use this one because I can pull out the product. So if you're gonna use a photo, I would suggest you use one with a lot of outside area for one reason. So if we take this and set it as a background image, the problem is, is when we insert a frame, the, let's see if I can kind of show you. So if I insert a frame and then I go and insert this picture, it's hard to line the stuff up to match because now what happens is using this size, maybe on mobile, it might not be as bad, but using this size right here actually changes the dimensions of the photo and it's hard. You can't get the same dimensions within this photo here. So you can see it sort of lines up, but it doesn't actually really line up that well. And it makes it very hard to line this back up if you do it this way. So my trick to that, all right, so we're going to get out of here real quick. We're going to we're going to use this frame. We can might as well put that up to the side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach this image from the background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to make it really small. I'm going to put it in the, I'm going to go into position. I'm going to put it in layers. I'm going to send this copy right here. It's highlighted here. I'm going to send it to the back. You can make it transparent if you want to. If it's in the back, you're not going to see it anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two photos together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and then this is the reason you want something that has some room on the side. I am going to custom, wait a minute, I got to make my screen smaller a little bit. I am going to custom size this onto here. The reason why it keeps the same size of the original photo and when you go to lay over it, it's going to be, it's going to be better for you. If you don't do it this way, it's going to be really, really hard to get stuff lined up. Trust me. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go in position. I want to grab this and throw this on top. So now I have a frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to take frames. Um, what I did with the original one is just get a whole bunch of different kinds of frames and do it. So like for this box, I'll use a box frame. Um, and what I want to do with this, now that I've got my sizing the way I need to, now I can line this up a whole lot better because my size should match the size of what I have here and they should lay over so much better. So yeah, I can just see a little hint here. So that means I need to go down and see how they're crisping up and they're, they're setting where they're supposed to be. Might need a smidge on the side and they're lining up. There it goes. See how it's nice and crisp now. And then I can go in here and then if you pull it up and look at it real closely, there's still a little bit of funny, funny right there. So I'll go right there. And let's see what I can do to get that funny funny off and line that little piece up like so. And then that's what you're going to do. You're going to line that up. And then what you're going to do is what I did is I just grabbed different kinds of frames. I wanted my frame looking like this with this one. So and I just did this. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to take a bunch of frames of whatever you want. You can do circles. You can do different patterns, whatever it is. You're going to go and pull your photo over. You're going to go and you're going to, well, this one I have to go like this. I'm going to have to put it straight like this so it'll match. Oh, that's not straight enough. We're going to go straight all the way down. There we go. And then we're going to line it up. We're only going to do a couple of these, but we're going to do that. And that's all you got to do is you're going to pick your frames out. You're going to line them up on top of your Let's use that little can there as a liner. I wish one day that Canva would make it so when you put a bunch of frames on here, you can have a little thing that toggles down and, and you can like grab all the frames and like, and it'll say, place photo in all frames. Yes, 
that would be so much, so much more amazing. And then you didn't have to do this. Let's line them up and make them look pretty because to me, this is the hardest part of lining them up. If I can find any way to not have to do it this way. So once you see it all looking nice and crispy, that's how you're going to use that. And then you can go in here and fine tune it if you need to afterwards. I see a little bit right there. But if you're doing this really small, the little finite details like that, you're not going to really see. So you can go here and you can try to just finite it a little bit more. And then when you have all the frames that you want in here, like you like them, what you're going to do, still don't like this one either. Give that a little oh, oh, there. And then once you have them where you want the, want them to be, what you're going to do now is you're going to go into your, you're going to duplicate the page. And then what you want to do is you're going to grab the frame and then you're going to make it as big as you want and place it where you want. So if you want it in the center to highlight that, that object, then you're going to just go and highlight that object. And then you're going to duplicate the frame that is in front of it. You're going to go and put it behind it like so. So when you do, you're going to go in here to match and move, turn your duration. We're going to apply it between all the pages. And what you can do now is you're going to play. And that's going to come up and that's going to go down. And then you're going to adjust your timing to where you want it because you know you want the ones. You're going to want these in the front in your transitions. You're going to want them a little bit shorter. And then highlight your product, put on your text, whatever you want to do. Um, the other thing you can do is what I did also with the other one, the other little trick. All right, so when you do the next project, what you want to do is you got this one right here, right, that you brought over from the beginning one. You want to duplicate this one. The reason why you want to duplicate this one to move your next item is because you need the, the page behind it for it to go back down. So now you need one here to move the next item. So you're going to go grab your next item on this one and you're going to, I'm going to rotate this one. I'm going to make it big. Oh, I ain't going to make it big like that. Let's go. Let's do this back. So it goes back to the size that it was. I'm going to make this one big. Hey, wait a minute. I had two pages here. So if you don't have two pages there for some reason, if you're like me, Oh, see, I'm deleting pages. Look at me. You can just go ahead, if you forget, just duplicate that page to make sure that you have two of the same right here. It's not going to hurt anything. Just do the two right here. And then, of course, you're going to need a third one now. You're going to duplicate the page, bring one around. So it's going to be your movement, two of the ones in the same. So this one right here is going to travel all the way through. And then you're going to have your movement ones in between. Unless you want a faster transition where you have one coming out, coming, going back down and one coming back out, then you can just have one here. But that's going to be a personal preference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the match and move. I'm going to apply it between all the pages. I'm going to take this one and I am going to make it a little bit longer. And then we're going to go from here and we're going to look. And then that is going to go back down into its spot. That is going to come and come out. And if you want to take these and shorten these up because they're just a transition, you can you can try shorten those up a little bit. So we'll show I am tongue twisted today, y'all. I've been sick for the past three days, so y'all have to excuse me a little bit. And then you can do that. Like that, and that's how that will turn out. So the other trick I did with one of uh one of the other animations I did with this, and we'll use this one as an example. So when this came out. I made everything behind it dark. So to do that, what I wanted is go into position, highlight what you want to be dark. So what I wanted to be dark was my background. So this is the piece that's popped out. So we don't want that one. So we want to have this one. I'm going to hit my control key and this one. And then I'm going to go here and make these transparent. So like that comes out on a white background. Or if you have a different kind of background behind that. So when you do here, then everything behind it fades out. And then that just is more highlighted that way. And you can do that. And then everything will come back. So you can do that. 
It looks really better with the dog one. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to go into my projects. What I'm going to do is see if I can find the one that I did. Oh, maybe dog stuff dog. Uh, here is the one I did previous. All right, so here is my collage with the puppy dogs. So what I did with here is I just made a collage. All of these are individual pictures. They are not frames. So they're individual pictures. I rounded the corners of some, added borders to some, borders and rounding, whatever you want to do, and I made a collage. So for this one, what I did is I duplicated the page. I picked a puppy. And what I did when I picked the puppy is I went into position. I, I moved that puppy to the top. And then what I did is click, I'm gonna click, I don't want to click out, click out of that. I just want to click off of this one. And then I'm going to go control, not control, sorry, shift this, highlight these. And then I'm going to take the transparency down to zero. And then it highlights that dog on the thing. So you can take that dog like so, highlight the dog, put the dog in the center. And then we're going to do the same as the other one. We're going to go and we're going to duplicate that page. We're going to bring it back to the back around like so, and it'll bring everything back up. So we'll look at that. And as, of course, you're going to want to lengthen that one in the center a little bit. So you'll have your, your slide, your match and move, your dog is highlighted or whatever is highlighted, person, whatever you want to do. And it goes back into the collage. You're going to do, you're going to duplicate the page. You're going to go, you're going to pick another puppy. Let's pick puppy here. So let's see which one's highlighted. Or you can do it, e I think it's easier this way, just to go on a layer and send it to front. That way it automatically is on top. And then what you're going to do is click the one below, hit the shift key, hit here. It's going to highlight all of them. Then you can take the transparency down to zero. And again, I forgot my double one right here. So let me go in here and duplicate this. Not delete. No, 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 no. Duplicate. All right. So make sure it's going to be two collages, your single, two collages, a single. Two collages, a single, because you need one to make it go up and one to make it go down. One up, one down. So it's going to be for each photo, you're going to have a collage in the front, collage in the back, collage in the front, collage in the back, and your single in the center. So now I got my single. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist puppy around, put them in the center. If you have any text or anything you want to go, you can you can put it on this slide. You can go text and put. Uh, Fido and animate it. Let's just have it rise or oh, let's Fido pop. Let's pop Fido. Pop Fido and then what I'm going to do is duplicate this again. You got to watch Canva too sometimes. You think you'll be duplicating one page and you're not. So we're going to put that back on the end and it's going to come back down. I'm going to lengthen Fido a little bit and then we'll watch the whole thing. We're going to shorten this one up because it's just like too much. Let's shorten this one in, and we'll shorten these two right here. And we'll see the little transition go. So we'll go here and then it'll bring that one and highlight that one. And then you can say, oh, this is Chi Chi Wawa. That's not Chi Wawa. That's a Pomeranian. And then you can go, oh, there's Fido. And then, or this is. Joe and Bill and whoever and whoever, if it's a company photo or whatever you want to do. And that's how you do this little trick. It's just a little easy way to kind of like pop something out, especially if you get like a whole bunch of products. It's, it's pretty good because you could go, this is my shampoo. This is our shampoo. And then you can maybe have a little bit of text or something on the side to do it. Or like I was talking with somebody else, your books, you're going to, you're going to highlight your book. You're going to put your book and then you're going to put a little synopsis on the side. So you're going to take your, when you highlight, you're going to make this kind of long. So you got timing here for somebody to read the synopsis you put up here. And here's the book. But you start off with a table of books and then you uh, pop the synopsis up here and then you have it come back down and then you pull your next book up.
So, and that's some ideas to do with this. And that's it for this. And if you have any questions, comments, or whatever, leave it down in the comments. You know me, I'll get right back to you. And if you have some questions and you're on my Facebook, you know my DMs are open. Um, they're a little wonky right now. I think Facebook thinks I'm a bot. I sent over 100, or 100 plus tutorials out yesterday and Facebook chopped me off at the knees and said I could not send any more links to anything out. So with that being said, if I don't send anything back to you, just understand that's what it is. I love you guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye y'all.